Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite fanboy, Gardner, the Linux gamer. You want to talk about fanboy? I am a huge, huge fan of uh, of Half-Life. The Half-Life franchise is awesome, and uh, it looks like we have our next iteration coming early next year, uh, March of 2019, or 2020, I'm sorry. Uh, that's pretty freaking cool. It's been like 12 or 13 years since the last Half-Life uh, game. Wait a minute, what? I'm talking about a game on this channel? I know that's not why you hit that subscribe button. You signed up to hear me talk about, uh, you know, the Librem 5 or, or, you know, Thalio or whatever. But uh, no, I'm actually going to talk about a game. And if you'll hear me out, we might actually learn something together. <laughs> nice. So I think the primary question is, will this game have Linux support? Um, and we'll get to that. But I wanted to talk about some of the awesome things about Half-Life Alex that, you know, m myself and some other people have noticed in the trailer here. Before we get started, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps the show out. You can also head over to LBRY, uh, lbry.tv slash at the Linux Gamer. They just uh, got rid of the beta. Uh, so beta.lbry.tv, no, don't need it anymore. Just lbry.tv slash at the Linux Gamer. Now, there are some people who say that VR is a bad thing. Either it's a gimmick or a ploy to sell expensive hardware, or uh, there are other things too, like, uh, you know, accessibility problems. Um, I can see some of those, uh, but the, the fact is, Valve are developing something totally unique here. And uh, I definitely can understand why um, this game is going to be exclusive to VR. I mean, imagine if people were having the same reaction to the Nintendo 64. I mean, the idea that like, oh my goodness, how many people are going to have to go out and buy the expensive 3D hardware of the N64 when the Super Nintendo is just as capable of delivering the same kind of experience with Star Fox? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the game is 3D on a Super Nintendo, but it can't deliver the same experience, especially without the control stick. And I think that this is another uh, move forward for gaming where we have been pretty much stagnant since the PlayStation 2 in terms of control methods and, and even longer in the PC space. I mean, Valve have tried to do different and interesting things with like the Steam controller. Um, and I think moving forward, the entire games industry into a realm where we can innovate as game developers, that's nothing to shake a stick at, to use a term that some people laugh at and don't understand. It's nothing to shake a stick at. It might be a gimmick, it might be, but I am willing to uh, to humor a gimmick uh, in, if it means that we get new and interesting and cool experiences. So with that being said, yes, this game is completely uh, exclusive to the VR experience. Like I said, I think that that might be a good thing because it's going to allow developers to uh, innovate. My impression of this trailer is that Half-Life Alex might be the Super Mario 64 of VR. It's the game that, that finally nails exactly what it is that VR is capable of. Now, Maybe I'm just being a little too generous with my praise or with my expectations, but I really do think that this game is going to be amazing. Now, Valve have said that if you own a Valve Index or you purchase one before the end of this year, you're going to get Half-Life Alex for free. It'll be uh, added to your Steam library as soon as it launches. You're also going to get a bunch of exclusive content, uh, including some skins to to jazz up your, uh, your Half-Life experience. Uh, you're also going to be able to get some uh, Half-Life Alex content in uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Um, don't really care about that, but there are a lot of people who do. This game is not exclusive to the Valve Index. It's going to be able to support uh, multiple different Steam VR compatible headsets, uh, which is really important, especially the Vive. Um, the Oculus Rift and a couple other, I don't know much about the Oculus stuff. I don't care about Oculus. It's owned by Facebook. I don't want anything owned by Facebook worn on my body. I don't trust them. And, and with that being said, I mean, I posted a poll over on, uh, on Twitter and on the YouTube community tab. And I asked like what people think I should do when it comes to uh, getting a Valve Index. I personally don't want any other headset besides the Valve Index. I, I think everything else is either 
too old of hardware or it just are, isn't offering the same experience. Uh, and people were suggesting that I get an Oculus Rift and I'm like, no, no, why would I do that? As far as I know, the Oculus stuff doesn't even support Linux out of the box, which, uh, you know, if I'm going to be getting this, I'm going to be playing it on Linux. Uh, there's no way I'm going to put Windows on a machine in my own home. That's insane. Uh, so yeah, this is, I'm going to be, if I get a Valve Index, which I anticipate I will be doing soon, uh, I am going to be documenting my progress here on the channel with this thing, running it on Linux and playing games, the majority of which through Proton. Um, that is going to be interesting. We'll see how that goes. So if you wanna see that kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's gonna be interesting because I don't think that there is another uh, channel on YouTube that does VR gaming in Linux. And if I start doing that, I might be the only one who's doing that. As far as I know, I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. One of the other cool announcements that came along with this is that Source 2 is pretty much uh, complete right now. Uh, and that means that they're actually going to be releasing development tools for Source 2 uh, alongside Half-Life Alex. Uh, that's pretty awesome. We're gonna be able to see uh, mods for this game. We're gonna be able to see custom levels uh, for this game. If this game does what uh, I think it might do, then we're going to see uh, a whole community spring up around this for uh, for modifications for this game, uh, maybe total conversion mods. As far as I know, there's a couple ports of GoldenEye for Source, and that would be cool to bring in those assets and be able to play GoldenEye in VR. Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. These are some ideas that I have. According to Valve News Network, there's actually going to be uh, the Hammer level editor released alongside this, and, and that should be where a lot of people get uh, access to the, the assets for the game and be able to create their own levels. But what's unknown at this point is whether or not the full Source 2 SDK is going to be released. Uh, if it's not, well, uh, that might be kind of a hindrance to the modding uh, community. But it's assumed that a lot of the mods and, and custom content uh, for this game is going to be available through the Steam Workshop, which means you won't even have to leave the, uh, the, the headset, the virtual environment, in order to download this content into the game. What I would like to see, now that uh, Source 2 is complete, I would like to see Valve open source Source 2. Uh, it only makes sense for them. There's there's virtually no downside. They don't charge uh, licensing or royalties, as far as I know, for Source 2. Um, so why not release it as open source? I mean, they are part of this community. They it's and, and it only makes sense for them to be able to release this code that they've developed to us, the community, to be able to build awesome things and maybe even develop Linux games in Source 2. Um, that would be amazing. So Valve, if you're listening, please do that. Open source Source 2. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be so cool. According to Valve News Network, this is the largest development team that has ever worked on a single game at Valve uh, simultaneously. That's pretty crazy. Uh, one of the things that's really exciting to me about Half-Life Alex is the fact that Campo Santo, the team behind my favorite game of 2016, Firewatch. So most of the people who were working at Campo Santo when Valve acquired them, uh, like last year, I believe, um, were had listed in the Valley of Gods, which was the game they were working on when they were acquired, listed on their Twitter bios. But recently, uh, Valve News Network reported that th most of those people had removed any reference from in the Valley of Gods from their Twitter bios. And now it's revealed that they are, most of them are working on uh, Half-Life Alex. They are fantastic storytellers. The fact that Firewatch was able to tell such a passive story um, in such a limited perspective, in such a beautiful way that the fact that they're working on this game now has me ecstatic. And on that same note, I would like to see In the Valley of Gods completed and released because that game looks amazing as well. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'm probably putting some B-roll on the screen right now. It looks phenomenal. I can't wait to play that as well. So according to uh, Valve and uh, Jeff Keighley and a bunch of other people who have got their hands on this game, it's actually a full-length Half-Life title. Uh, this game is about 15 hours long. 
Um, that's pretty incredible for a virtual reality game. There, I don't know if there's any other games that have that level of linear uh, storytelling content. The game's gonna have several different methods of locomotion, uh, depending on what you're comfortable with as a player. Uh, it's going to have teleportation, which works kind of similar to how Portal works, where you, you know, you open a portal over there, you pop it, it fades out, you the player gets moved over to that location and then it fades back in, um, which is from my understanding, the most comfortable means of moving a player through VR. Uh, there is also a uh, shifting where you glide between two locations. So you point to a location over there and then you get moved uh, in a linear fashion. And then the other one is continuous movement where you have full control over your character and you move them uh, with the analog stick through the environment. Uh, I have heard that that is the way that induces the most motion sickness in terms of player locomotion in VR. Personally, I'm, I'm gonna try all three, but this game was designed with the teleportation mechanic in mind. But the fact that the teleportation is how this game was originally designed uh, means that I'm probably gonna end up playing it the way the developers intended. Um, the other mechanic that has me very excited is the uh, gravity glow. Gloves. Um, they work very similar to the gravity gun in Half-Life 2. Uh, being able to reach across uh, an empty space with your hand, you have these gloves on, you can reach across and grab something that's out of your reach like a Jedi. That's super cool. I can't wait to get my hands on that. Uh, pun not intended on that one. All right, so let's talk about the uh, the Linux support for Half-Life Alex. I mean, it really is the $500 million question, at least in this community, right? In my opinion, the answer to the question, will Half-Life Alex have Linux support, is an unequivocal yes. But how that support manifests, uh, that's up for debate. Let's look at the evidence. So Steam VR, uh, the Valve Index and controllers, um, even even Source 2, they all have native Linux support. I mean, games like Dota 2, Artifact, and Dota Underlords, they are natively ported over to Linux, and they are Source 2 games. And you know, these are all first-party uh, Valve games. Now here's the thing. Uh, the lab is Valve's uh, answer to like Wii Sports, but for VR, right? Uh, where where Wii Sports kind of showed off what you can do with this unique and interesting motion control thing on the Wii. Um, the lab shows off the unique and interesting things you can do in VR. And aside from one of the mini games, the robot repair mini game, which is running on Source 2, the rest of the experiences in the lab are actually created using um, Unity Engine, which I find an interesting choice for a company that develops their own engine, right? It's interesting to me because uh, this collection of games actually does not have native Linux support, the, despite the fact that the headsets and the controllers and Steam VR all have native Linux support. So one of the things that I found really interesting and exciting about Proton uh, when it was released was the fact that there was mentioned in the release notes uh, a native Steam VR to Proton bridge, allowing games that are running using the Proton compatibility layer to utilize uh, the native version of Steam VR. Um, this is something that they haven't talked about a whole lot, but in the last release or, or, or the August release of uh, Proton, they actually uh, mentioned a bunch of fixes that they had made to Steam VR specifically for Proton. Um, that makes a lot of sense when you consider the fact that listed on uh, Half-Life Alex's uh, Steam page, they only mention Windows, um, which is kind of uh, disheartening. But at the same time, this is Valve's technology, Proton, right? And this is Valve's VR flagship game. And while you definitely have to have Linux drivers in order to use hardware on Linux, you don't necessarily have to publish uh, Linux binaries for games, especially when Valve are working really hard to build a compatibility layer uh, for games like Proton. My hypothesis is that they are probably not, at least initially, going to release a native Linux binary for Half-Life Alex. Um, and to be completely honest, 
I don't think that's much of a problem. Um, most of the games that have VR support, and I'm talking the vast majority of the games that have VR support on Steam right now, have only Windows listed as supported. The only game I was able to find on Steam that was for VR with Linux support was the Talos Principle. That was the only one I found. And I, I, I looked through the first like 20 pages. Um, that was the only one on there. Uh, which is kind of disheartening to me. But at the same time, when you look up most of these games on ProtonDB, they have a gold or a platinum rating. So I don't know what the future is for uh, VR on Linux. I'm still of the mindset that Valve might be developing a VR console of sorts. And uh, if they do do that, they are definitely not going to be running Windows on that machine. I think Proton is a major component of their future plans for Linux and to convince people to switch over. And I really do believe that it is okay if they don't release, at least initially, a native Linux binary for uh, Half-Life Alex, because there are a lot of games that run just as well, if not better, on Linux through Proton than they do on Windows. And at the end of the day, what matters with games is having fun. If you can have fun, that's what's most important. So yeah, that might be a controversial statement. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think about this because uh, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts. I mean, do you think that it would be a problem if Valve didn't release a native Linux binary for Half-Life Alex? Let me know in the comments below. You can hit me up on Twitter, at the Linux Gamer. Uh, we also have a forum, forum.heavyelement.io. But um, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. There's a link down below. But uh, no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me. The Linux Gamer, and as always, thanks for watching.